All right, well, hello, and, and thank you for joining us for our Facebook Live event, Pass the Bar Exam, Tips for Success. My name is Billy Thompson, and I'm the Director of Communications here at Access Lex Institute. And to my left is Sarah Berman. Sarah is our Director for Programs for Academic and Bar Success at the Access Lex Center for Legal Education Excellence, which is based in Washington, D.C. Prior to joining Access Lex, Sarah served as a professor of law and as the Director of Academic and Bar Success Programs in law schools in California and Florida. And she has lectured in bar reviews for more than two decades, helping thousands of students pass the bar exam nationwide. She has also published a number of books on bar exam and law school success. So thank you, Sarah, for joining me today to host this event. Well, thank you, Billy. I'm so happy to be here and really excited to work with students. Great. Yeah, we're going to try and keep this to 30 minutes. And we're going to have the discussion in a question and answer format. I have a number of questions that I know you've been asked often by students. But for everyone watching, uh, if you have questions, please feel free to ask. Um, type them in your chat box at any time, and Sarah will answer them as they come in. Like Sarah said, this is for students. This is for you. Um, so I'll start as broad as possible. Sarah, uh, how should people prepare for bar review? Wow, Billy, well, that's a great question. And of course, the answer depends on when you're starting. So let's assume many of you are taking the July bar exam and you're probably taking finals right now. So what can you still do to prepare ahead of bar review? A couple things, but the most important really is prepare your friends and family that this is going to be a summer where you need focus on the bar exam. So that means kind of telling everybody, I will see you in August. Let's do that in August. That's a great idea. Let's plan it for August. Keep those kinds of phrases in your back pocket because you really need to focus on you and your studies for the next two months. You, your self-care, taking care of making sure that you're sleeping well, eating well, getting yourself in peak form, and your studies. You want to absolutely get the most out of bar review. And I'll give one other tip for that. Right now, after finals, in between getting ready for those first bar review courses. You can just flip through the table of contents of the subject that you're going to hear before you hear that subject. Just familiarize yourself with the terminology. Just look up any words that are like, oh yeah, I remember we talked about that in one hour. I don't remember what that means. Look it up because everything that's in that lecture is gonna stick better if you're a little fresher in it. And even five, 10 minutes of review before the lecture will pay off tremendously. So those are a couple tips. Got a lot more. If we have time for those, uh, we'll get to some more of that too. That's great. So I read your book, Sarah, Pass the Bar. And I was struck by the quote, bar success plan. Can you describe the components of a bar success plan and discuss why those who develop one and commit to it are more, more likely to pass? Yeah, absolutely. So I just want to, here's the book that Billy was talking about. And in it, and I'll probably read from it a little bit, but the bar success plan is just like a strategic plan. So if you were a business, what would you need to get your business off the ground and be successful? Because that's what you're doing here. You're planning to be successful in July. Oh, and by the way, if anyone's not planning on being successful in July, we need to do some reframing, re-engineering, and making sure that you believe you can and will pass this July's bar exam. That's first and foremost. So your strategic plan or your bar success plan is going to start with a mission statement, which is I will pass the July 2019 bar exam. That's going to be front and center. And then what resources do you need? So it's going to spell out your bar review course. It's going to spell out the hotel and reservations and logistics for the exam site. You're going to look up any special rules that you need to know about the exam site. And it's all the things that you can get ready over the next two months so that when your date comes and you're ready to go in there, you're free to really do your best. And it sets you up for success, it walks you through all the different components, logistics, finances, structure of the exam, study plan. It's all part of your success plan. Excellent. So law students develop the ability to multitask in law school. Some go into bar preparation and preparing, they can just do that and prepare successfully. Do you think there's a difference between law school multitasking and bar review? 
Okay, that is an amazing question. So we live in a world of multitasking, right? I mean, we work together and I know that you're working on 20 projects at a time. We're all juggling all sorts of things at once and we've become good at that, uh, but not as good as we think we are. We're not absorbing at the level of detail we need to when we are trying to do really focused work and we are doing three things at once. So. What I want you to do is be smart and strategic about your multitasking for the next two months. Here's what I mean. If you're doing something, a task that requires real focus, like trying to learn uh, a new rule of law that you didn't know or writing a practice test, and we're going to talk a lot more about practice tests because that's the true key to success. You don't want to be answering your phone at the same time. You don't want to be texting. You don't want to be uh, doing anything other than being focused, single-mindedly in the moment. But there's certain things that you can do that will help for bar uh, that don't require your ears. And here's what I mean. You want to split your senses to be strategic. If there's something you need to do or want to do that's going to help you, that only requires your eyes and hands, you can listen to bar review while you do that. What do I mean? Classic examples, working out. You should work out, you should exercise. You don't have to become, you know, a, a, a master at any new sport or anything like that. Just walk, just do something to get yourself moving. But you can listen to bar review lectures or yourself repeating rules that you've recorded while you're doing that. You can do meal prep for the week ahead of time so that you don't have to waste time getting healthy food for yourself. You can cook while you're uh, listening to a bar review lecture or listening to something. It doesn't require your ears. And then the last little tip I'll give you too, because I know some of you, anybody out there as a parent, uh, a lot of people really know how to multitask when they're parents, especially with young kids. So I get this question all the time. First of all, are you, you know, doing something that's not possible by being a parent and a bar taker? Absolutely not. You can do both. And for those of you with older kids, you are role modeling success by studying in front of them. All of the talking and preaching in the world isn't nearly as effective as studying in front of them. It's powerful. I've had so many students whose kids' grades went up while their parents were studying. The other thing is if you've little kids, you can, again, do the thing where you're singing to them or talking with them while you're studying. They don't care if you're singing, uh, you know, lullabies or if you're singing Farnsworth on contracts. Doesn't matter as long as it's you and you're being close and connecting. So there's a lot of ways to multitask that are strategic but you wanna be really careful to give yourself the focus you need when the things really demand your full focus. That's great, It's good life, life advice as well. Um, we have a question that's come in, I uh, appreciate this from Megan. Uh, what is some advice for the week before the bar exam? Um, and any advice for the actual test days? Yeah, okay, Megan, thank you so much. So in the book that Billy was talking to, I go right through the week's eight week countdown, I call it, and I have things to do the week before the exam. And you know, if there's some real low hanging fruit, like verify that you have your admission ticket, uh, reread those rules about what you can bring in. There's some jurisdictions that have dress codes. You wanna be very careful about using that last week efficiently for any kind of business. You also wanna take care of any details so you're not sitting in the exam wondering if the dog's taken care of, you know, if other things are taken care of, pay rent in advance, do anything that you need to do to make sure you're single-mindedly at the exam site. But in terms of um, work, the best thing to do the week before the exam is to read and read out loud and maybe even retype practice exams so that you expose yourself to as many fact patterns as possible. And also, this was advice, I can't even claim, claim it as my own, but it was the best advice I ever got from one of my favorite law professors. And that was to uh, put together one page on each subject. And his advice was, he said, it was very dramatic. He said, he grabbed a piece of paper, he folded it up, put it in his back pocket. He said, pretend, pretend that you could bring one page in per subject. You could cheat, pretend, obviously, pretend. What would you put on that one page? 
and get your one pagers or cheat sheets as I like to call them, cheat in quotes, uh, together the week before. Because if you can condense all of contracts to one page, if you can condense all of con law to one page, then first of all, you have a logical order of the issues that are tested, heavily tested in those subjects. But you also then give yourself something to hold on to that last week when you are nervous and you're pacing around. And I know that uh, I myself did that. I had piles in the bedroom on the floor and I just paced and said, all right, if I'm given a contracts question, where do I start? Picked up my paper, read through the issues. All right, if I'm given a torts question, what are the main things? What are my antenna gonna be up for? So those are just some of the things you can do in that last week um, and get yourself in a super, super positive mindset. That's great. Yeah. Thank you for the question, Megan. Um, so another one from here. Uh, what are some of the biggest mistakes you've seen bars make, takers make? Okay, great question. Biggest mistake, hands down, is not doing enough practice tests. And there's good reasons why people are reluctant to start with the practice test. One of them, I always hear this one, I don't know enough law yet. I got to do a month more review. No, 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 no. You got to start with and continue with practice tests because all of the learning science proves that this is how we really learn, by fully engaged, active learning. Just sitting and reading outlines, that's passive. That is not going to get you to absorb how to then produce the answers you need to produce. Uh, so you've got to train, and I call it training. I don't even call it taking practice tests. I call it training with practice tests, like you're an athlete training for the Super Bowl or training for the Olympics, some really intense competition. And uh, the uh, importance of practice tests cannot be overstated. So I think that's the biggest mistake. Another mistake is to not clear your plate of distractions, including people who are not supportive. And it's hard to say you're gonna clear your life of people who are not supportive, but you really have to surround yourself by as much positivity as possible because your confidence is going to take a hit. It's gonna take a hit when you do a practice test and you get it wrong. And that's another place where we just need to spend one minute talking about a power tool for success. And that is celebrate mistakes. You are not taking the exam until the end of July. When you make a mistake now, dance the happy dance, because that means you are not going to make that mistake on the actual bar. You're learning from every practice test. You're learning from every opportunity. So, to translate the response to your question, a mistake, if you will, is taking it personally or feeling down on yourself for one minute if you make a mistake. If you make a mistake, celebrate it. And I'll just add that everything I just mentioned, the practice test, the celebrating success, these are now proven scientifically in some empirical studies that our organization has helped to fund uh, that really show the science behind all of this. And then you suggest Jimmy Cliff for doing that. Oh man, I, I'm, I'm a big reggae fan and we were just playing before the lyrics to that song are you can get it if you really want, but you must try, try and try and then you succeed. And I, and I just love that message because above all, the bar exam is about hard work. And I, I will add a newer twist on this is anybody who doesn't believe that hard work pays off Beyonce's homecoming film, 2019, just a month ago, she talks about the power of hard work and how she trained for eight months for this two hour movie. And the words that she used to describe the power of hard work are incredible. So yeah, big believer. Yeah, very good. It always comes back to Beyonce. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, well, we have um, another question. This is from Adam. Awesome. Um, so uh, Adam asks, how would you schedule a typical bar study day? Okay. And you know, what would it look like? Okay, great question. Adam, I got to give two variations of that. One is if you're full-time studying, which I hope most people are, because it's hard to work and study at the same time. But reality is some of you are going to be working. So for full-time studiers, and I have the full breakdown of the schedule in the book, but I'll just give you a sample. I say start with what I call your five daily. And that's your five daily MBEs. You've got to practice consistently. All the learning science, the terminology, the jargon is distributed practice as opposed to mass practice. 
What that means in reality is you cannot cram for the bar exam. It's got to be daily repetitive practice. So you start with your practice right off the bat, get a little bit in. Get a healthy breakfast in, do some exercise, and you know, you can change up the order of these things depending on what works for you. Then a lot of people take a morning bar review course, like from nine to one-ish. If that's what you're doing, then I say right after that course, you want to sit down for a few minutes and just condense your notes. Just look at what you flagged or starred. And by the way, just a word on notes. Don't sit in a bar review class and try to be a court reporter and take down every word. Just flag and star, just write keywords. And then right after it's over, sit down and just say, these are the things I have to look up because I don't know what that means. These are things I'm good on. I'm going to work on these. Oh, these are things that the bar review lecturer says are heavily tested. So you want to spend a little time with that. Have a healthy lunch. If you can take a walk or do something to let off a little steam, then get back to an afternoon session. I like to say make it at least a three-hour session. If you can focus for three-hour blocks, then you'll be ready for the three-hour blocks on the bar exam. And endurance is one of the most difficult challenges because we're not used to focusing for that long at a time. Then take a good dinner break again, and then work on some more passive work in the evening for a couple hours. Uh, and what do I mean by more passive work? That might be a time to re-listen to a lecture. It might be time to uh, write out a sample answer. It might be time to write up some flashcards and get them ready for memorization. You can't memorize until you have things in what I call memorizable form. So it kind of is a couple, three different blocks of time that include bar review, and then your independent study, which is a mixture of review and practice tests. Just a quick note, Adam, if you are working, for those of you working, what I strongly suggest is on work days, get an hour in before work, an hour at lunch, and like two hours after work, because it is really hard to put in a full work day and then do five hours of bar review. It's diminishing returns because you're too tired to absorb anything. And then put in full like nine to six days on the weekends or on your non-work days if you're not working uh, on a traditional weekday weekend schedule. I hope that answers your question a little bit. And I have, again, in the book, there's a lot more detailed uh, information on scheduling. A great question. Yeah, very good question. Thank you, Adam. We have another question. And this one's from Kellyanne. Uh, do you have any tips for retakers who are really close the first time? Yeah, first of all, being really close the first time is double-edged. On the one hand, it's frustrating and uh, unnerving and, and really disappointing. On the other hand, it's empowering because you know one more, two more, few more questions and you would have been there. So you have proof beyond a reasonable doubt that you can do this. So the most important thing is keep your confidence up. Then there's two other things in terms of substance. One is what I call maintenance, and the second one is reinforcing your weak spots. So maintenance is keeping strong in the areas you were strong on. So let's say you know you were pretty good at the torts MBEs. You wanna make sure that you still got that in your back pocket. Don't let that go for six months and then hope that you'll have it accessible on the actual bar. Uh, and then beef up your weak spots. Really the key when you don't pass a first bar exam is to use the information as a diagnostic to just sort of say, where do I need a little additional work? Do I need to write out some more questions in full? Did I not do that the first time around? Do I need to focus on some other areas? Did I hope that a uh, landlord tenant or easements and covenants or someplace I found really particularly tricky wouldn't be tested and left myself weak in some areas? Can I make sure that I'm good on and strong on everything? Now, you don't have to write a Supreme Court brief. Good and strong is just competent. You don't have to be the world's biggest expert on every piece. It's too much, but you have to be strong in every piece. So focus on the maintenance and on the really shoring up in those particularly uh, uh, challenging areas. Great. Great. We have another question. This one. Looks like it's from uh, Maddie. Uh, what do you recommend in the morning of the exam? Oh my gosh, Maddie, fabulous question. And I'm gonna give credit here to one of my uh, very dear friends who's a bar review professor and law school professor. And his advice is do a practice question before you go in as a warm up exercise. 
So uh, over breakfast or, 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 you know, before you go in, if you're at the test site, you know, have it in your bag and then you're going to have to put your stuff away because they don't let you bring anything into the exam. But either read an outline, an essay question, or if it's on MBE day, do a couple MBE questions to warm up. You don't want your first couple bar exam questions to be your warm up. It's like stretching before you go compete in an event. So that's one thing about exam day. Careful about what you eat. Eat food that's going to make you sustained on and strong for that three hour period. Don't eat too much, don't not eat. Uh, and again, play with that with some simulated exams and get to know what's good for you during that time. Talk yourself up, pep talk, go in strong, uh, and get all your stuff together. And I think those are really the most important tips for uh, exam day. Be early, too. Oh my gosh, I had a student, this is not a joke, who essentially was not let into the test site because she was one minute late and they closed the doors and they wouldn't let her in. So especially if you're commuting to the exam site or something like that, be early. Be early, you will be much less stressed out uh, than if you're rushing to get there. Yeah, control what you can control. Yes, yes. Oh, and you know, along those lines too, great hot tip, hot tip, pun intended, um, dress in layers because some of these bar exam sites are crazy hot or the air conditioning is cranked up and you want to be able to make yourself as comfortable because just Billy Gold, control the controllables. Yeah, right. awesome. Yep. Um, well, that's, that's a good question about the exam day. And we have a question here. Uh, what are some of the most helpful suggestions for success going into intensive bar prep? Mm -hmm. So going into intensive bar prep again, I said this at the outset, but I can't say it enough. Clear your schedule. Get everything that can be put off until August, put it off. Prepare your world. Prepare your friends and family. Let them know what this is going to take. And I have some dialogues in the book. I also have some letters that you can copy, you can say they came from me, and send them to your friends and family to let them know how much this is going to take, and how much of you this is going to take. So that's really uh, a key point. Uh, don't second guess your bar review. You picked a bar review for a reason. Don't spend hours and hours challenging rules. Or I don't remember that that was the way it was phrased or whatever. Rules can be phrased slightly differently and still be accurate. Plan your schedule to include practice tests. Don't avoid them. Have that mentality going in that you will make a lot of mistakes, and that's fine. In fact, it's good. If you are not making mistakes, you're probably not digging in deep enough. So those are some of the, you want physical prep, you want logistics prep, you want psychological prep, and then you want academic prep. We got some good questions in. today. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Adam, um, who asked the question a little bit ago, yeah. so you, you keep mentioning this book. Uh, where, where do we get it? Okay, so it's published by the American Bar Association. So I think it's shopaba.org or something like that. Uh, but you can just Google it, pass the bar exam Berman, and it'll come up. And this is what the cover looks like. We are actually in the middle of uh, a second edition, which should be out in September. So tell your friends who are taking the bar next year uh, that there'll be a new version. But it's, uh, it's just updating what's in there, which really has, I think, a lot of good strategy uh, to help harness and leverage the things that undoubtedly you are already being told by the wise people in your life. Yeah. Okay. And uh, we're getting close to the half hour. Okay. Point. So I think... Uh, this, you touched on this again with uh, Adam's earlier question, but it might be good enough. If there was anything you wanted to add, um, if you do have to work during bar prep, um, yeah, it, that, that doesn't mean you're definitely going to fail, does it? Oh, absolutely not. Um, I, m one of the law schools I worked in for 15 years, the average age student was mid-40s, and almost everybody was second and third career, and they were all taking the bar while working, and some with uh, young children, and some with young children and aging parents, so responsibilities were pretty hefty. Uh, please, please clear what you can. Control the controllables. Uh, plan on working for as long as you, I mean, on studying for as long as you can. So any vacation time you can take, any unpaid leave you can take, any understanding on the part of your employers. So even a long lunch helps because if you can get a two hour lunch time and close your door or have a space in the office, if you don't have a closed door space, 
uh, or a nearby Starbucks or library or something. Uh, you can do an hour practice test and then review it afterwards. Uh, you can do a couple essays. You can do a bunch of multiple choice questions. Uh, I know some people can't tell their employers, but if you can and get some empathy and some camaraderie, that really helps. Uh, and there's a lot of very specific strategies that you can uh, use to leverage that time. Also, really, your own community, your, uh, your people, your team, the people who can support you and, and give you a break from everything else. Because if you have to work and study, then if there's anything else that can be put off, uh, that will really help. And, and remember, you're getting a lifetime license. It's only a couple months you have to give up. It's hard, but it's doable, and it's a temporary deprivation of everything else in your life, and it's worth every ounce of sacrifice. That's great. So yeah, there's a, a question a little bit earlier. Um, we've answered it in the chat box, but just to reiterate, um, it was asked that uh, someone's at work now and they keep getting interrupted and wanted to know if this event will be available to watch again later. Um, and just want to reiterate, like I said, it's in the chat box there, but this video will be available on the Access, Access Lex Facebook page and we'll have it available at accesslex.org as well. Yeah, and thanks though, because I think that also we talked about earlier that we're gonna also post some resources for students. We have a, a long list of really great books uh, that if you're taking the July bar, it's probably too late to read most of them, but you can excerpt, you can read a little bit of things. Uh, and we also have some information about scholarships that are available for people studying for the bar and some other resources that we have posted on our website. Uh, and I think that um, some of those uh, sites are being posted now in, in the chat box. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so if there aren't any other questions uh, from our audience today, we can leave another minute or two, but that's just about all the time we have. Yeah, today's session. so I just want to thank everybody. I know Billy and I are so grateful for your participation. This was really fun. Mm -hmm. uh, and we believe in you. That's the most important thing. And, and what you are doing by becoming licensed attorneys is helping to better the world. Uh, I call a legal education a power tool for social change. You are protecting our right to live in a country governed by the rule of law. You are the guardians of our future. So anything that makes you feel discouraged this summer, just know that you are doing good, you are doing well, and you are getting a lifetime license to do good and to do well. And uh, just, just don't get discouraged. And, and think of us in this pep talk uh, when the days get dark, because they will, but you can do it. We, we believe in you. So we're looking forward to celebrating. We'll, we'll toast. Yes. At the end of July, to them having gotten through the yes. bar exam, right? Yes, to them. Okay, to we'll play some more reggae. We'll, we yeah, okay. All right. Um, yep, no, thank you, Sarah, and thank you, all of you, for joining us. Um, if you have additional questions or comments uh, that some things that we didn't address or things that you think of after, um, please visit us at accesslex.org um, and you can and reach you, out to Sarah's yeah. team directly. Right. It, uh, our email is success at accesslex.org. Yep. So thank you again for joining us, and uh, we hope to see you again real soon. Okay. That'll do it for today.